Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be interviewing a comedian from Los Angeles. Her name is Jenny Griffin. Um, I don't know if she's funny or not. Um, I've been on YouTube to find, try to find videos of her and I haven't been able to. Um, but we've been Facebook friends for a few months now. Um, I always like to network with other comedians in other areas and stuff. And um, I'm going to be interviewing her today. <clears throat> I'm very curious to find out whether or not she's funny. She probably is. She is a very pretty girl, I have to say. And uh, she's a few years younger than me. And, um, again, pretty excited uh, to talk to her and stuff. Um, I, look at, I looked at her website and everything. She's got a, a manager or an agent, it looks like. And um, I think she's got some credits under her belt and everything. And <clears throat> I'm just curious to find out um, what she's all about and stuff. And she'll be calling me in uh, just a moment. And so, yeah. Here is my interview with Jenny Griffin. Hi, Jenny. Hey. Hey, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing good. Oh, that's great. That's great. Thank you for taking the time today. Yeah. So, yeah, I, fr I friended you on Facebook several months ago because I think it's important to network with comedians in different areas, you know, because you never know when you um, might be in town and uh, you need stage time and stuff. So I, I like to uh, friend other uh, comedians in other areas and stuff, especially L.A. Yeah, I have no idea where uh, Reading is. It's it's um, a couple hours away from Sacramento and seven hours away from L.A. I've only been here uh, for a year. I'm originally from San Francisco. I was I was there my whole life until last April, and that's where I began doing comedy. And I still am a San okay. I still am a San Francisco comedian. I do go out there and do shows and stuff, you know, every now and then. But I'm primarily a San Francisco comedian. Nice. I, I still need to go out there to do comedy. Well, if you get well, if you get booked for do a show out there and stuff, um, that's good and everything. But to like live out there and be a comedian, it's fucked over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've been in LA my whole life, so. Mhm. Mm I'm used to here. And I've been doing comedy here, and I've tried it out in New York and uh, Las Vegas, and that's about it. Oh, you tried it out in all those areas? Yeah. Yeah, and I want to go expand everywhere else. I just have to, like, I don't have a lot of family out there. Everyone's from Southern California. Mm -hmm. So this is where I, I can do everything kind of for free now. And, um, yeah. yeah it, it's an expense if I have to go out. I know, fucking, you know, a, a lot of us comedians, uh, you know, we have trouble getting booked because we don't have enough movie or TV credits, you know, and we're uh -huh. doing all these open mic shows. I've been doing it for 12 years. I'm just fed up with it. I, I had, I, I got this one paid gig a year ago and I couldn't make it because it was fucking storming and a fucking tree uh, fell on top of the train that was behind my train. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't meant for you to be there that night. Yeah. It would have been nice though. Cause it was at Tommy T's in Pleasanton. Uh, but so did you always know that uh, you were funny growing up? No. <laughs> I actually, um, I was the shy kid in my school. Um, very sociable, but just more shy than anything. Um, and, and I don't know, I just went through a lot of crazy stuff at the same time about three and a half years ago. And I just didn't give a shit anymore about nothing. And um, I was just very tired of the friends I had at the time. I needed new people to talk to, mm -hmm. and I needed a job. And right. I said, well, like, what's wrong with doing stand-up? Like, I don't think, I, I mean, it's what I want to do. And sure enough, I went to
have to go check out other comedians. And like I, I brought my my suit and a resume with me to the uh, comedy club because I thought I had to apply, you know, submit an application <laughs> to, in order to perform. And little did I know, all you needed to do was talk to the booker, put your name down, and he would give you like five minutes of stage time. And um, so I wasn't prepared my first night because I just wanted to go see. But after hearing a few comics, you know, go over stuff, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, And everybody seemed kind of bored. Like, the jokes weren't hitting strong that night. It was an open mic, too. And I was like, man, I bet you if I get up there, I'll make people laugh. And that's what I did. I just signed up. I told them about this story. And people were just so intrigued. And, like, they're like, oh, my God, really? Like, that happened? I'm like, yeah. And I ran the light. I probably w- was up there, like, six minutes. And mm-hmm. it was awesome. The love I got back from it, they're, like, inviting me to the next comedy club open mic and i just had a lot of friends after that and it's just been working for me that's great it's been pretty cool yeah that's how it started (laughs) (laughs) i never thought i was gonna be a comedian in my life i always dreamed about holding a microphone i thought i was gonna be a singer but my singing is not all that (laughs) it's not so this is it did you did you watch stand up when you were a kid? I did. Um, I've always admired comics. Um, I think Chris Rock was like my favorite that I had seen in person. Um, and of course, yep. you know Kevin Hart blew up, and like everybody was in love with comedy. I feel like a lot of people grew onto comedy at that point, and like I like started looking more into it. Uh, but my favorite comedian is John Mulaney. Mm-hmm. Like, I love John Mulaney. I love how he delivers and everything about his performance is, is great. And I'd love to be like that one day, but I cuss a lot. And, like, all my stuff is not that clean. And um, I'm just trying my best. But, yeah, I admire John Mulaney a lot. Uh, it's fucking awesome. Uh, do you have any influences or favorites besides John Mulaney? Uh, yeah, besides John Mulaney, um, I really love music, and I admire a lot of like bad girls, like Cardi B, Rihanna, like all of the like female performers that are up there. Like I admire them. Like I want to be like them, mm-hmm. but in comedy. And um, I don't know, but the. the I'm Latina, so, like, the Latina comedians that I look up to, I guess you could say Angela Johnson. Yeah. Um, but I haven't really seen her much. Like, I, I like I wish that there was a Latina comedian like Tiffany Haydish, you know? Yeah. Just out there all the time. And I haven't seen that. So, like, I really want to put in the work and just get to there eventually, like, I know right now I'm just in the beginning. I'm just learning everything, and I just keep admiring people, and I see what what I want to do. But, yeah, like, I love to act. I love to dance. I love to sing, and I love to do all of that and just bring it on stage with me. <laughs> nice. So uh, when when what year did you start, and, wh- and where was it at? I started in... Uh, February 2015 in Hollywood. Wow, I was wow, I was I was fucking dead in the hospital in February of 2015. I was in a coma. I had I got hit by a car. Oh no, really? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah but that's what I started. I started at, at the Hollywood Hotel. The Hollywood Hotel. Uh huh. In Hollywood. They have an open mic night there? Yeah. every They have a mixed book show slash open mic. They pull names out of the lottery. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. I just put, I, I threw my name there. They, they knew it was my first time, too. So everybody was just very warming up to me. But, I, like, the story I told was about how this guy turned down a blowjob from me. And that usually never happens. The situation, <laughs> especially if you're not even in a relationship, and uh, yeah, it, it's 
just a ridiculous story, and and um, there's more to it, <laughs> but that's it. That's how it started. Just I just wanted to tell everybody how how whack this guy this guy was. Oh my god, that's funny. Uh, uh, so ha- had you been had you been writing at home? Um, you know what? I did go through like a divorce a month prior to me starting comedy, mm-hmm. and I wrote down my whole entire story because, like, um, I like the, the guy I married. He cheated on me and left me for the side chick. And um, I was very hurt at the time, and but that wasn't what hurt me the most. Uh, what hurt me the most was um, like me, well, him telling me that he cheated, and I slapped him, and he called the cops on me, and I got arrested for it. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind, we have two kids together, so he used everything that I had mm-hmm. against me in court when he fought me for custody, and. Now I have the baby daddy schedule like the every other weekend mm-hmm. and he has full custody and uh, that's what hurt me the most. Not that he cheated on me and left me for the side chick, but that he wanted to keep the kids away from me. And um, so I did write a lot and um, I, I still write about stuff like that. Like I write a lot of baby daddy jokes just because I'm in the situation. Right. And that's how I release some of the stress that I have to deal with. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just crazy stories that make me want to write and make me want to perform and like just write a, jokes about it and then just get out there and just tell people like, okay, like this is what I'm going through. Hopefully somebody can relate, share some advice or send, send some good, good positive vibes so I could just keep on going with this life. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's an ongoing issue, and I'm just used to it. I'm happy. I, I'm doing comedy, so it, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I I I looked um, on YouTube, and I, I I didn't see any videos of you. I mean, have you um, you know made any videos? I I did post one. I I tried to start the YouTube thing, but I'm just not Googleable. Yes, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong for it to not pop up. Yeah. But I did start one. It's just, it, it's not up there, I guess. It's not that popular. So it's like deep, 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 deep down somewhere. Um, but I do want to get more involved with the, with that. Right now, my main thing is social, uh, Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat. Yeah. All of them are active, and I post all. I try to post as much stuff as I can. Like I've done comedy sketches with friends, and I, I have one stand-up clip, and I'm planning on posting more, but I just don't have like the right footage. Like there's, there's, like I can't. Sometimes I forget to record. Like it's just been crazy for me to just do all this work on my own because my mind's just all over the place, but I do plan on posting more, and I do plan on um, fixing my YouTube, because right now, it, it's out there, but people just can't find me there. And it's public, like, it's not private. I just don't know how to get get it out there. Yeah, fucking... Uh, Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, fucking friends of mine, like, have, have like, recorded me on stage... But fuck it, it's always one where I'm fucking bombing, and it's like, oh my god, like I only have like maybe two or three videos on YouTube where I'm actually killing on there. You know? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to get a really good tape. Yeah, especially when you want to enter a contest or something. You know, have you pl- have you done any uh, festivals or contests? Um, yes, here in LA only. But I want to eventually travel. Hopefully next year I will be at the Boston Women's Festival. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to submit my. I have to submit a ten minute, and right now I don't have that. But I'm gonna work on it this year so that I can do that and possibly other festivals around the country. But right now I'm just doing everything here in LA. Like I've done. I, I did win, <laughs> but I've done them here. Um, the last one was the Silver Lake 
festival. Have you done um, uh, the Flappers Festival? Uh, no, but I have auditioned for it. Me too. I've done the auditions, and and I mean, every, usually people do pretty good, and they go for some shows. I just haven't gotten a date to that. But I've done the I've done their auditions, and I've done a few. I actually do have a a Flappers profile, not for the Burbank, but for the Claremont. So if you look me up on the Claremont Flappers, there's uh-huh. a profile built for me already. Oh, nice. With my picture. Yeah, so they can book me easily there, but that was just kind of fun. Like, I prefer the Burbank one. Yeah. But I just have to go back and do it. Yeah, I auditioned for it um, in 2015. I had just gotten out of the hospital six months before, and I thought I was ready, but I fucking wasn't ready. I, I killed... I mean, everyone laughed and everything, but I just, I wasn't ready. And there was maybe, there was maybe two people the whole night that got in that I actually felt deserved to get in. The, the other ones, I was like, what, really? You know, they, they just weren't that great. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm going to audition again this year. I think I'm, I'm finally ready again. I'll see. Yeah. And maybe I'll see you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be trying out. What uh, what clubs uh, have you become a paid regular at? Um, a paid regular. Well, I wouldn't really call myself a paid regular, but I often perform at the Comedy Union um, and the Comedy <laughs> Store. Oh, nice. And the, and the Laugh Factory. Nice, yeah. Those Yeah, I was not able to get stage time at the comedy store a couple of years ago when I went down there. Fucking, oh my god, I I got this really weird feeling like um, when we were me and my me and my friend we were like walking down the ramp of the parking lot and I got the shutter down my back because I know that's where um, Steve Lubeckin landed on when he jumped off of the Hyatt in 1979 during the strike and. We went inside, and I had this, like, supernatural feeling of the place. You know, that place is as ominous and creepy as they say it is. You know? Yeah. Like, wow. I felt the presence of dead comedians in the room, and I didn't feel um, I didn't feel creeped out, but I felt like I belonged there. Like, I felt very at peace there. It was a weird feeling. Uh-huh. Really weird feeling. I just love it there. Last time I went was last September, and um, there was there was a lot of um, great comedians going on. And I remember Leslie Jones made an appearance, and she fucking destroyed the place. Uh-huh. Yeah, she's great. Uh-huh. But um, so so when you play the comedy store, do you play uh, do, uh, do you play the main room or the uh, OR? done every room in there um and the biggest one was uh i did the kill tony show right. in january this year right and and yeah that's i mean i think there was probably like about a hundred people you know regular audience comics and it was being broadcasted um and you know he has a large following so he get, i don't know how many views he gets like hundreds of thousands of views so yeah, I, I, I performed in front of a big audience this year and that's probably been my biggest accomplishment in comedy. Yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of proud of myself. Uh, did I kill it? Uh, I did okay. Oh, that's good. I think I did fine. Yeah, I don't think I bombed completely, but I, I think I did okay. Oh, that's good. That's good. Have you have you uh, opened for anybody yet? Um, uh, my friend Vince Boyal, he travels a lot. He he's in and out of the country, mm-hmm. and uh, he's a Filipino. Yeah, and that's been the only um the, my only friend that he he's making it, and I've opened for him. Nice. Have uh. Have, uh, since you've started doing stand-up comedy, have you uh, 
Have you got sucked into the um, the uh, the backstabbing and the drama that happens sometimes amongst comedians? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. Uh, but I always have to just keep in mind that I'm doing my own thing. Like I showed up at an open mic by myself. I didn't get pushed to be there. Nobody was there for me. I I've been doing my own thing since day one, and that's how it's always been. And that's how it will always be, unless I have my supporters there or whatever. But I just push everything to the side because nobody, nobody's journey is the same. Everybody's journey is different. And um, if something was working for them and, and it, it's not working for you, then you just got to try something new. And so that's just how I feel about it. Like, I don't pay attention to it much. I know it's there, but, oh, well, I'm doing my own thing. Yeah, I remember when I first started in 06, you know, I had no friends, no mentors. I still really don't. I've, I have one uh, mentor um, who who actually started after I did, but he's he's older than I am. And I just, you know, no, but there was no podcasts. There was no reference for me to find out about the business side of comedy or how comedians operate, you know. So I, I found out very early on a lot of comedians are fucking cynical assholes, you know. Yeah. And, and it's just uh, it's just a fucking crazy thing. And like I, I try like to keep things professional with them and not hang out with them or anything because they're just fucking just bitter and just jealous. You know what I mean? And uh -huh. there's this one guy in the Bay Area. He knew me during a uh, during the period before I before I had my car accident. I was a bad I was a bad alcoholic, and I used to go up on stage just completely wasted and just bomb. And he and um, as soon as I uh, got out of the hospital, and you know I'm sober and everything, and I'm pursuing stand up and all that. He fucking just does everything in his power to fucking try to sabotage me, telling people not to book me talking hella shit, you know? And this is a guy who's who fucking steals jokes from fucking everybody and nobody calls him out on it, you know? Oh, no. Yeah, that's, that's awful. Yeah. I, I think you should just um, set my example and keep it positive. Like, I, 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 I'm a strong believer in that. Like, as long as I keep it positive and I don't back, anybody like I'm gonna have good karma and it's gonna follow me certainly and so forget that guy you don't need him yeah I've, I'm sure he's not famous and I'm sure he's not doing good <laughs> so he, uh, he does pretty good he does pretty good and I, I just don't know why but it's, it's 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 a matter of time before he does it you know yeah it'll hit him mm-hmm I would, one thing I hate about about comedy nowadays, the fucking bringer shows. Yeah, I don't like bringer shows. I know. Whoever came up with that idea, it's so fucking dumb. You know? <laughs> yeah. I know. I, I've grown a few. I, and I, mean, and I, I put in work for the ones that the, for the show, bring the shows that I know are going to be good, and my friends are usually the producers. Right. Because they try to help out. But um, if I don't know the producer and if it's a bring your show, yeah, I'll promote it, but I'm not going to put that extra effort. I'm not even getting paid. I, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm doing it, but, and I'm trying to put in the work, but I'm not going to put in that extra, extra effort for a show that I don't even know. I don't even know what the other people are gonna bring to you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's work, and um, I don't know. Yeah, but in general, I do not like the bringer shows. I feel like the producer, you know, is putting on the show, and it's their job to bring in the audience. How it Or hire somebody to bring in the audience. Oh, it used to be that way, and then fucking they put that responsibility on us, you know, and yeah. it, I think it needs to stop, you know, I think somebody needs to like, you know, step forward and say, hey, you know, this is not our job, it's your job, you know, because we're, we're amateurs and we're just beginning, we don't fucking know anybody, you know, yeah. 
especially since the show is like in the middle of the week and not on the weekends, you know? Yeah, it's a weird thing that's going on in comedy right now. When I started in 06, you know, comedy had a fluctuation where, like, nobody knew, like, you know, what what direction comedy was going to go into because social media was just starting to get big. MySpace was the thing at the time. And um, the only uh, big comedian in the world at that time was Dane Cook, you know. And he got famous off of the Internet and everything, but... Nobody really knew, like, what the future held for comedy, you know? But we can all fucking blame Dane Cook for starting the internet shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think the internet's good. It exposes more people. Yeah. And, and, I, I, and I know a lot of people here, um, and a lot of friends who have a large following on their Instagram, uh, you know, on their Instagram and stuff, um, they just have, and they just have to perfect it and like bring it to their show. You know, bring the people, bring the people from the Instagram to the show. And I think uh, comedy is definitely getting more support mm-hmm. from the internet. Um, I I just started three years ago, so I don't really know how how bad it was for you know amateur comics. Um, I, I, I went to those shows where I knew the, the comedian was a celebrity, you know, like I've seen him on TV, like I know him. Right. Like I remember I was that audience member. Um, I didn't really have a lot of, uh, comedian friends in the beginning, you know, like before I started doing comedy, like I didn't really know anybody, any amateurs, but like I've met so many that are great and I see the potential there and it's just a matter of fact of them keep, keep putting on that work, getting on those TV shows to get recognized by people and then yeah, I'm like, I know they're going to be great right. like, when they're famous and hopefully I'm there with them. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Do, do you act at all? The only thing I've done so far have been comedy sketches, mm-hmm. um, but I do want to get into acting for movies. Yeah. Um, right now, I'm writing a script for movies for different movies, different projects that I would want to work on. Um, but yeah, I I'm trying to do my own thing. I'm not auditioning for anybody else's movies. I'm just focused on doing my own projects. Mm-hmm. And if that works, then I'll keep doing it. Or if there's an opportunity I see for someone else's movie, then I'll do that. But yeah, I do want to get into acting. That's awesome. Yeah, me too. I'm looking for that too because I I I act. I do comedy. I write scripts. I um, do this show. You know, and that's what I'm trying to do. I mean. All it took was a car accident for me, for me to realize that this is my destiny and this is what I want to do and that showbiz is no longer a hobby. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, if you need to look, if you need a Latino or a light-skinned black girl, you need to hit me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> I'm available. <laughs> you sure are. Yeah, do you um, uh, do you get hit on after shows a lot? Uh, yeah, I do, but um, I always push everybody to friends. I've tried the dating in the comedy scene, but it it's not for me. No, it's That's... definitely not for me. And I I learned that quickly. I learned that my first year, and I just try to keep it professional and you know friends only. For, for, yeah. you know, for everybody, just because I want to be, I want to feel comfortable coming in anywhere and not having that drama. Like, I, I'm not there for relationships. I'm there to work. Yeah. And, and yeah, I see comedy as work and, like, a place to, you know, be respected and bring that respect and so dating in the scene is is not my thing and I'm actually dating somebody right now and it, she's not a it's a woman and it, she's not a comedian Ooh. so I'm good <laughs> oh 
cool. You like girls, huh? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, how far? But how far, though, as in terms of like um, success, do you want to go in your career? In, in terms of um, success, how far do you want to go in your career? I want to travel. I want to travel, travel like all across the world and be able to perform my best. I'm Mexican, and I would love to translate my jokes in Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something I'm practicing now, but I would love to do that. Right. And Uh, do you think you'd be happy being uh, a road comic? Yeah. Yeah, I see myself traveling. Like, I have two kids, and right now, like I said, I have that baby daddy schedule, so my schedule is pretty free, and um, I'm just free to do whatever I want at this point. Like, my kids are doing great. They're, they're in school. Their dad is there to support them and do everything he needs to do. So I feel great. Like I feel like I owe this to them. Mhm. Mm well, uh, what's your favorite? What's your favorite joke of all time? Hello. Hello. Jenny. Jenny. Hello, Jenny. Are you there? Yeah, I hear you. Sorry, I put I put Bluetooth, and you were on the other room oh. speaker. Uh, I just have okay. I just have one last question. Um, what's your favorite joke of all time? That I said. It could be uh, what you said or somebody else. Yeah. My favorite, uh, Eddie Murphy said this to a couple 13-year-olds in the audience of Delirious. Um, a bear and a rabbit are taking a shit in the woods. The bear says to the rabbit, excuse me, sir, do you have a problem with shit sticking to your fur? The rabbit says no. So the bear wiped his ass with the rabbit. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Ever seen have you ever seen him like in the audience of a show no i didn't even know he he does that i've heard him say in interviews like, every once in a while he goes to a comedy club and watches people really? yeah okay i mean i'm gonna perform well now that i know he might be there <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jenny, I, I thank you so much um, for taking the time today, and I hope to work with you someday, 
And I'll definitely see you when I move to L.A. Yeah, we'll meet up. Absolutely. That'd be a lot of fun. All right. All right. Well, you have a great weekend. You too. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Well, there you have it. Jenny Griffin. Ain't she a sweetheart? Thank you so much, Jenny. You're a very fascinating girl. And um, I hope I see you perform soon because, I mean, you were, you made me laugh. You were funny on the show, but I'd like to see you perform in front of an audience. Um, if you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.